Mandarin rat snakes are one of the most recognizable snakes on the planet where the exception of maybe like a rattlesnake or a cobra from anyone not in the hobby or in the know. These guys are indistinguishable from really any other snake. In fact, they're so beautiful and colorful that a lot of people even think they're venomous because a lot of venomous snakes are very brightly colored and they've been called, you know, like bumblebee snake from people that I've seen on like TikTok and Facebook and stuff who aren't really in the reptile world. But these guys are an amazing, amazing species that I want to spotlight today. Now, so we call them, so Mandarin rat snakes, they come from Southeast Asia, and they actually have a pretty widespread range, but most of their range does occupy a lot of Southeastern China and a lot of Vietnam. And there are several different localities spread throughout there that are even recognized now in the hobby. Now they get the name Mandarin rat snake, supposedly from Mandarin, the Chinese language that is spoken there, although there's also a good amount of evidence to suggest it's mostly playing into the stereotype of Chinese and Asian culture in general, so meh. But these guys have amazing, amazing and beautiful and bold, bright blacks and yellows and white markings. Now the background of the snake outside of those really cool patterns, sometimes a little more banded, sometimes a little bit more like kind of diadem diamond shaped, is kind of like a nice creamy tan color. But there are some that are very high red animals where that red kind of comes through that pairs really well with those yellows and whites and blacks. And there's even a true azanthic form of these guys as well. Now they're a fairly manageable sized and reasonably sized snake where they usually hit around four, and a half, four to four and a half feet long. But there are some localities specifically that I wanna say it's the Vietnamese localities that they actually can sometimes achieve almost six feet in length. So that's a pretty good sized Asian rat snake, right? Now these guys are fairly crepuscular in the wild. So they're found usually around dawn and dusk, you know, and to, you know, just before the sun goes down to a couple hours after it goes down completely. And then sometimes in the morning, usually in the evening is when a lot of the crepuscular snakes are most active. Now they're usually fairly terrestrial where they're often found, you know, on the ground, under logs, buried under the first layer, uh, under the first leaf litter. But they've also sometimes been found kind of a little bit into the trees, not fairly high up. But that being said, in their range, their range has crazy variations to where sometimes they're found at close to sea level and other times over a thousand feet above sea level, which is a very wide very gap of topography that changes the climate and the temps and humidities that have to do with that as well as in parts of their range even like vietnam so the island of vietnam where it's usually significantly warmer for longer periods of the year their temps can be between 54 degrees to 95 degrees fahrenheit or for anyone who's not in the united states with the rest of the world you know around 12 degrees celsius to 35 degrees celsius and that is their temperature range throughout the year so obviously that means that when the periods of time they're active varies greatly. And that's something that we have to consider when we start keeping these guys in the hobby. Now, keeping them in the hobby, these guys have probably the longest and the most well-known reputation for being unkeepable for the longest time. They were sometimes considered the most difficult and delicate species of snake to keep in the hobby to the point where not only private keepers, but zoological facilities had trouble keeping them alive. And that is because for decades, when they came into the country, so out of the, Asia, out of the areas of Asia where they came from, they were always very stressed, chronically dehydrated, riddled with both internal and external parasites. And I know I've mentioned this before in specifically in a lot of like the Asian rat snake videos, because that's where a lot of them came out of. They came out of the skin trade. They came out of the wet markets or the food markets where they're not kept well and alive to be cared for for extended periods of time. They're supposed to be just kept long enough until they can be purchased for food or for the skin trade. So they're not kept in good conditions at all. It's happened everywhere around the world for the most part, but in Southeast Asia, it does seem to be significantly more often with the species that we now have to care for. So for the longest time, no one could really keep these guys, but thanks to very selective people, and yes, there are some zoological facilities as well, that were dedicated and slogged through it and spent the time, the money, the patience, and the heartache 
to finally be able to reproduce these guys. And now we are finally starting to have a really good captive born population of what you are now finding to be very sturdy, capable, adaptable pet snakes, which usually typically happens. We just have to slog through it for sometimes a long, long time before we get there. Now keeping these guys, we can start to attest to see the fact that they're very easy to care for. Not necessarily corn snake level of ease, but very simple and not nearly as hard to take care of and as sensitive as we thought for the longest period of time. So these guys, you know, they're a very manageable species of snake. They can be kept, so remember that range we talked about, that 54 to 95 degree? They're very crepuscular, so I think that if you wanted to have these ones here, you know, you need a basic, you know, kind of high 70s, low, low 80s temperature. That's kind of your ambient temp range with a place for them to absolutely get away from and want to be cool with a nice hide and then a very small, low basking spot with full spectrum UVA, UVB lighting for them to get a little bit, a couple hours a day that they're going to seek it out um, would be really good. So we're talking four or five feet long for an adult as an enclosure is the minimum. You know, they do like it humid. So, you know, decent substrate, they can hold on to that humidity. Lower temps in general, we're not talking ball python boa level temps. So, but overall a little bit lower. And I think a night drop would definitely benefit them, um, especially if you want to start to breed them. That was something that I was finding very often that they did very well with, absolute, with number one, a cool down abrumation period, but nightly night drops was very beneficial to them. So that's definitely something if you want to keep them on, something with uh, you know a thermostat that has that night drop temp, something like a, you know, a VE or one of the spider electronic type thermostats that can do that. Amazing, amazing snakes. These guys are really cool. Supposedly though, I will give this a little bit of a caveat that the baby sometimes can be very difficult to get going. Um, so as you've seen in the video so far today, all the little actual video footage of this comes from my friends that we did all of the other uh, more recent species spotlights for the most part, where didn't have time to do the full videos there, but we shot all this really nice footage there. Good friends. <laughs> Um, I believe they is finally considered to go with the name Braden Exotics, but they don't have any of their stuff uh, fully ready to go. And as I've mentioned before in all the other videos, as soon as they do, I'm going to retroactively go back and add in all their stuff to go check out their amazing snake species because they have even more than we had time to film with this one and all of the other ones. Um, amazing, amazing. If you guys want to go check out the full playlist of Species Spotlight, you can see mainly the ones that I keep, but now I'm starting to venture in and working with some of the ones that my other, uh, you know, compatriots in the reptile hobby do have that I can talk more about them. Great species of snake. Um, as I did say before, before I kind of broke away a little bit there, the babies do sometimes have trouble get going. Uh, my friend supposedly was a little difficult to get going for, um, right away where they didn't want to eat a lot. They still kind of run away from it sometimes, but they are definitely a more stable animal. And as they get closer to adulthood, they're calming down even more. Um, as a whole, they're not really snakes that want to be handled all the time. They're definitely more of like a display species. And if you do give them a nice viv where you are giving them plenty of places to move around and thermoregulate properly and places to bask, you will see them exhibit those really cool natural behaviors and you'll be able to see that and be a really cool display species. But if you're looking for an animal that you know you want to have out while you're just kind of walking around, maybe not necessarily the best choice for that. It's still a really, really cool species of snake. And supposedly they actually have pretty slow metabolisms for rat snakes. Colubrids in general seem to be able to eat a little bit more often, including the, a lot of the Asian rat snakes. But the bamboo rat snake, the bamboo rat snake, the mandarin rat snake seems to have a little bit slower of a metabolism. So instead of those weekly things, a lot of people just kind of get in the habit of doing because it's easy for us. A little bit slower often, a little bit, you know, less frequent things like kind of boa constrictors, which honestly makes it like the best rat snake for me because that's how I really got into this hobby was keeping boas. And I don't feed boas nearly as often as I do a lot of the other species of snakes. And so if I could have that kind of mindset that I'm already kind of stuck in a little bit, it's really easy for me to go into that. And because I know I can monitor the temps of that very well, I've been doing this long enough, I know that a mandarin rat snake might be the best Asian rat snake species for me, which would be really cool. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want to, like I said before, check out that um, playlist of all the other species spotlights. You can see not only my animals, but uh, my good friends' animals that they have just 
amazing species. They are so cool and it was really fun to be able to actually work with and handle them for a little while and do all this really great filming and I'm very appreciative of them allowing me to do so. Um, and as I said before, I'm gonna tag all their stuff as soon as they get all their details um, squared away for that. As well as, I'm also gonna do this because I've gotten several questions in multiple videos about some of the t-shirts that I wear because I don't wear just Jay-Z's reptiles paraphernalia. I have a lot of other t-shirts that I have gotten either because I think they're cool or they've been given to me or I get them to support my friends and you know other people in this hobby. And so what I'm gonna to start to do is I'm gonna actually start to put down where the t-shirt I got it from, so like who it is, and then a link to their stuff. So obviously this one, Reptile Rapture, they're in Madison, Wisconsin. We actually went and we did a visit there. They were really cool, showed us some amazing stuff. I got to learn a whole bunch of really cool stuff, not only about several different species, but even owning a reptile pet store too. If you wanna go check out that video, I have a list of about reptile adventures. Um, I'll actually put this at the end of this video, so I'll have the playlist, subscribe, the other playlist for the Reptile Ventures for this one, as well as a link to their stuff in the description of this video. And as I said, I'm gonna retroactively go back and start to add in links to the other t-shirts that I've worn about. So that way you guys can go check it out if you want to and support other people as well in addition to uh, supporting me. Thank you for that, by the way. But hopefully today you guys did enjoy this video. I very, very much appreciate it. Um, questions, comments, concerns, ideas for other videos, let me know down in the comments. I write them all down if I think I can do them feasibly or if I know enough to be able to do so. So there are some that people have even asked almost a year ago that I'm still working on and I have started to get into. Like, I don't know a lot about leopard geckos. So I went and visited my friends in Denver who work with not only leopard geckos, but other species of geckos that are sometimes called them and cave geckos too. It's a really good video if you want to check that out. It's also in the Repels Adventure playlist. But yeah, I try to cover a lot of different stuff and especially I always try to talk about or at least put my two cents into what um, people have asked me to talk about as well. Um, hope you're having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and supporting me through this amazing journey that I'm going through. And thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Hope you're having a great day and we'll check you next time.